the um, Israeli public is getting totally fed up. I think at the beginning, uh, a large majority of the public believed him, believed that, you know, he was trying to get the hostages out through military action. But that has absolutely um, proven to be uh, a farce and, uh, in fact, has the opposite results. It's ended up in the killing of some hostages. And uh, time is running out. I mean, the hostages are dying. They're dire conditions. They're held. Uh, some of them 80 meters underground with no, not much air in the dark, uh, no food. Some of the hostages are elderly. Some are as young as uh, one year old. So, you know, between ba between the babies and the elderly and the wounded, um, the, uh, the Israeli public would like to see the hostages return. Benjamin Netanyahu says he has authorized plans to invade Rafa in the south of Gaza. Speaking at a news conference last night, he said they'd begun evacuating civilians at the, and that nothing, including American pressure, would stop an invasion. He was speaking before undergoing a hernia operation, and it comes amidst large demonstrations in Jerusalem and Tel Aviv, with tens of thousands of protesters calling for Netanyahu to resign as prime minister. I'm joined now by Nomi Bar Yaakov, an associate fellow of the International Security Programme at Chatham House. Uh, she's a ne negotiator in the Middle East and previously advised the UN. Uh, Nomi, good afternoon to you. Good afternoon, Carol. Let me start with that news that Prime Minister Netanyahu is preparing to head a, press ahead with an invasion of Rafa, despite the international pressure for him not to do so. Well, I think it'll be lunacy um, to try to get into Rafa. In any event, he does not have the support of the Israeli people. He does not, the, pub the public, the massive... Um, Dozens of thousands of people demonstrating in the streets um, against the war, against the invasion of Rafa and for the imminent release of the hostages, which um, will, of course, um, entail a ceasefire. So, um, as you mentioned, he's undergone an operation. Um, he's still in hospital. Uh, the rumours are that it's much more serious than the reported hernia. And uh, this has been going on for some time, meaning um, the hospitalization for um, quite a serious condition. So I don't think while he is uh, not acting, he's currently um, Yariv Levine is acting prime minister, I think it's highly unlikely that there will be any entry into Rafa. Yeah, Yari Levine, uh, deputy prime minister and justice minister, is working as acting prime minister while Netanyahu is out of action. I mean, we have seen demonstrations against his leadership in the past, but what has led to this big upsurge in protests that we've seen in the last day or so? I think the um, Israeli public is getting totally fed up. I think at the beginning, uh, a large majority of the public believed him, believed that, you know, he was trying to get the hostages out through military action. But that has absolutely um, proven to be um, a farce and, uh, in fact, has the opposite results. It's ended up in the killing of some hostages. And uh, time is running out. I mean, the hostages are dying. They're dire conditions. They're held, uh, some of them, 80 metres underground with no, not much air in the dark, uh, no food. Some of the hostages are elderly. Some are as young as uh, one year old. So, you know, between, ba between the babies and the elderly and the wounded, um, the, uh, the Israeli public would like to see the hostages return. And they'd also like to see the end of this government. Well, uh, Benjamin Netanyahu heads this fragile coalition of figures, including some far right figures and others from across the political spectrum. Um, do you think that this, this is reaching the stage where that entire government is now at risk, particularly if Benjamin Netanyahu is out of the picture for any length of time? Well, it's not clear how long he's going to be out of the picture for. However, uh, it is clear that this is the beginning of the end of uh, this government. Then it's not only the war they're trying to pass a um, a law that will exempt more Haredi ultra orthodox um, Israelis from uh, settlers mainly from uh, military service, and at the same time, there's a call to increase the length of time of compulsory military service, which means that the burden 
um, is on uh, the large um, secular population. There are some religious people who, of course, do serve in the army, but the um, this government is insistent that unless the law passes to exempt a very large number of uh, their own from military service, um, that they will quit. Whether the right, whether the government will fall from the right or from the left or from the center, it's pretty clear that it is going to fall. That said, Netanyahu is a master of survival, and it's very, very, very tricky, given that um, he's likely to pull all sorts of tricks out of the hat. What does all this mean for the war in Gaza, giving, given that Benjamin Netanyahu has said he'll not just press ahead with the military offensive there, but carry on with this invasion of Rafa? Well, again, I, I don't think there'll be a large-scale invasion of Rafa. I don't think it's possible. There are about 1.5 million displaced Palestinians um, sheltering. I'm reluctant to say sheltering. They're living in makeshift conditions, dreadful conditions. Um, about 100 um, displaced Palestinians for one toilet. Uh, there's a serious humanitarian crisis. Food isn't getting to the population. Um, Hamas is insistent that the population needs to be able to move back to the north. And that's actually currently being negotiated um, in Cairo. There are negotiations ongoing in Cairo for a ceasefire um, and for an exchange of hostages and an increase in humanitarian aid. I don't think there's going to be a large scale invasion of Rafa. I don't think that's possible. Nomi Bar Iyakov, um, really good to speak to you. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you, Carol.